By the 1720s, enslaved black people outnumbered whites by more than two to one in the Carolina Low Country. Slavery was probably unique in every region where it flourished. Massachusetts, New York, Virginia, and Barbados. But in South Carolina, it was probably the most industrial form of slavery because the scale was so, so great. The task system was something that was unique to South Carolina, whereby enslaved people had a given assignment on each day. So they usually went to work in the morning at sunrise, and a day's task in the field would be to hoe a quarter of an acre, which was 105 feet square. And people spent most of the year up to their knees in mud, bent over, tilling away at the soil under the sun. Rice was a very demanding master. In South Carolina, slaves are worked almost to death. And then they go back to Africa, and they go get some more, and they are continually replenished. In Central Africa, men generally don't do agricultural work. There's even a proverb, if you want to humiliate another man, you say, you're no man, take up a hoe, um, indicating that only women would do this kind of work. And yet here in South Carolina, men were being forced to work right alongside of women. In West Africa, the mother would pound a little bit of rice every day to prepare the evening meal. It was a, it was an art form. It was a skill. You could be proud of it. You then found yourself doing the same thing. You're growing rice, but now it's completely different. The sound of the pounding of rice in Africa was the sound of domesticity, uh, but the sound of pounding rice in South Carolina was the sound of exploitation. Well, the more money that the white elite made, the more it was in their interest to make the slave system a kind of invincible fortress that would perpetuate the uh, comforts of the few. And so the incentive was, for those who ran the society, to set up extensive policing systems A slave, a slave, especially under these circumstances, wants to survive, wants to be free. And it also doesn't take much imagination to understand the anger of being enslaved, of being held against your will, seeing your loved ones subjected to treatment that no human beings ought to experience. The first time, your punishment was whipping. If you ran away a second time, there would be an R branded on your right cheek. The third time, one of your ears would be severed, and another R would be burned onto your left cheek for runaway. And if you ran away a fourth time, if you were a man, the punishment was castration. Gruesome punishments that had been familiar in England were exaggerated in the slave society.
the planter had to calculate that I can punish this person even if they die. I can import new people from West Africa, and I'm making so much money in this process that I can afford to do it. 